Because the British ruling class at all times has had two reasons for controlling Ireland and oppressing these people. The first is that the British feared the military value of Ireland to any of Britain's enemies. Britain's rulers from feudal times to the present have feared the possibility of an independent and free Ireland allying itself with their enemies in a war. Why does Israel, why are they afraid of Palestine? Because they're afraid because of the solidarity from Jordan, Lebanon, Yemen, Iraq, Iran. They are afraid of the solidarity that these countries have with Palestine, the same way as they feared, the English feared that Ireland would have solidarity with other countries as well within the region that are enemies of England. This is, ooh, Lord. Ireland said not, they said, no, 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 not today. So, Ireland, uh, man. Ireland and many Irish people have been vocal about the genocide going on in Israel and Gaza and uh, against the Palestinians. And they've been pretty vocal on it for quite some time. Uh, we are going to take a look at one of their most famous, uh, which is the dame herself, Claire Daly. If anybody doesn't know, Claire Daly is the homie. So um, we're going to take a look at that. So she's talking to Yanis Verifak. Vera I always Verifakis. I always get his. I always mispronounce his name. I get tongue tied all the time. So apologies, but. Let's take a look at that. So here's Claire Daly. Let's take a look. It is my great pleasure to be here with Comrade Claire Daly. Claire, you just had to give a speech here in front of this fantastic audience, this rally. Tell yeah. us a bit more about it. I mean, look, at I think for both of us to be here today from Greece and from Ireland to stand in solidarity with the people of Munich, we know that we represent the voices of the people of Europe who are so disconnected from those in power. The people in power are puppets of the military industrial complex. They're enabling a genocide in Gaza. And it's very clear that the ordinary people in Europe want no part of that. When we were just arriving here, I noticed there was a NATO flag being waved by an anti-demonstration demonstration. And I was thinking to myself, my goodness, don't these people realize that NATO is like the mafia? They create insecurity to sell security. They create threats to sell protection. And in the end, NATO guarantees that Europe is deindustrializing. It is falling behind economically, socially, morally. It is becoming geopolitically irrelevant. Absolutely. I mean, to see NATO flags being flown here when we know that NATO is simply the organization for the advancement of U.S. interests is absolutely pathetic. When we have a leadership of the European Union, which sanctions ourselves so supposedly to undermine the Russian economy, but just succeeds in having the Russian economy becoming the strongest economy in Europe, you know that the lunatics have really taken over the asylum here. And the needs of people in Europe are for cooperation, for enhanced solidarity on all of matters. And it does start with Palestine because they have been hijacked. They have been the mouthpieces of Israeli genocide. And it is so shameful to see that being done in the names of European citizens when it is clearly so not the case. One of the things that I notice is that it, it seems like a lot of Europeans, and by Europeans, I'm not talking about the people in leadership and their governments. I'm talking about people on the ground. Europeans, by and large, actually are standing with Palestine more and more every single day. And it's not just the Irish, right? It's also the people in 
Britain. It's also the people in France and in Germany, Spain, Italy. It is going throughout Europe and they're expressing their solidarity. Shout out to one of the members of the uh, Orlando chapter of RBN, Sabiha. She said, she said that the governments may be with Israel, but the streets are with Palestine. And that could have never been more appropriate, the, uh, you know, stated, because that's what we see. And people like Claire Daly and Giannis, they are just expressing what many of us have been expressing. Look at what's going on. Like there are, there's literally going to be another large pro-Palestinian march this weekend. There's going to be many all over the country. There have been daily, daily, daily. Because the people are with them. So let's continue. We have a uh, European Parliament election happening in June. Though you, the European Parliament can never change anything, you have proven with your voice in it that uh, it is important to have a forum just a podium on which we can tell the truth to Europeans. This is why I'm very much looking forward to us working together to bring about a voice of reason, of peace and shared prosperity, which can never happen in Europe unless we become uh, liberated from NATO, from the military industrial complex, from uh, the banking and financial community. Uh, and we need to stand together in this, along with Palestinians, along with Germans, along with Italians. You know, Ireland, at least, is not in NATO. Thank God for that. So, it's true. Because, I mean, when you look at NATO, NATO is really just a military arm of the United States being used as a cudgel to not only advance further east towards Russia, because they really want to make Russia into a vassal state uh, to increase their hegemony around the world, but it's also Israel, in a sense, is a vassal state that is within the Middle East in order to keep control of the Middle East and its resources. So when you look at uh, the role of NATO, NATO is really just a tool used to beat the global South and Europe with. It's just a hammer that beats them over and over and over. And a lot of Europeans are saying, no more. We do not want this. It's crazy, but even Europeans are now starting to see through the BS. Which I congratulate. <laughs> because it's like, yes, thank you. And they're also looking at the global south and going, oh my God. This is how we got a lot of the, a lot of the benefits that we've gotten in our social democracies. We've actually ended up raiding the global south in order so that we can have, you know, the universal health care, so that we can have the universal child care and the tuition-free college and all these different things. We literally had to go into the global south and, and extract and cause slavery in these places. Remember what happened in Congo? Remember what happened all, over 100 years ago under, under Leopold in Congo? 10 million Congolese were massacred over what? Rubber. And just like what's going on in Congo right now, a lot of the rubber that was used throughout the industries, including in the production of cars for tires, it was from Congo and being used in order to extract resources out of there. And they were basically subjecting the Congolese to slavery. Same thing is happening today, except for instead of it being rubber, it's cobalt and coltan. Let's continue. 
that? Well, not for much of what today. Our Prime Minister for the first time is here in Munich at the security conference, something that has never happened before. They say we're not going to join NATO, but Joseph Borrell has made it abundantly clear that European defence now is aligned with NATO. So it may not be a name, but in reality now, they are driving all of Europe into NATO. And that's why I yeah. absolutely echo your words. It is so important that as we go into the European elections, I don't know if I will be re-elected. I know that those in power in Ireland are absolutely adamant to make sure that that does not happen. But if I manage to pull it off, I sincerely hope that I am joined by you, Yanis, from Greece and so many others are speaking against militarism and against peace. It is absolutely what Europe needs. Every day I'm contacted by people from Germany, from Italy, from France, who feel their views are not represented in the Parliament. So we need people like you there. We need people like others. We need to break through that domination and to reclaim Europe for the people out of the hands of the lobbyists. That sounds like the United States. They're going through what we're going through. It may not seem like it as badly as us, but the grass always seems greener on the other side. And as the bastion of capitalism continues forward, then as you can see what's going on in places like Germany and France Italy, Greece, the UK continues. It's going to be uh, even more of a breakdown and it's going to lead to more social and economic upheaval within those regions. And you know what? Let's have some fun trying. Absolutely. Always, it doesn't matter whether always. we win. What matters is that we keep up the good struggle together with all these people. Absolutely. So let's begin with free Palestine before we can free Europe. Absolutely. Yeah. We say in Ireland, if we fight, we might win. If we don't fight, we've lost already. So that's what we're here to do. To all right. Free Palestine. Free Palestine. Free Palestine. Seeing Giannis and Claire like that, it just... It brings warm feelings. I'm, I ain't going to lie. That's one thing I definitely will say. But yes. So I'm going to share this because she's expressing a lot of what is the, the frustration of Irish people have been feeling. So this is the news that I wanted to bring out to you guys. This is out of Ireland, Palestine Solidarity Campaign. So let me enlarge this so you guys can see this good and clear. It says, Irish Senate calls for sanctions on apartheid Israel. The Ireland-Palestine Solidarity Campaign this evening welcomed the unanimous passing of a motion in the Senate calling for robust actions by the Irish government to hold apartheid Israel accountable for its ongoing crimes against the Palestinian people. Woo! Says the motion moved by civic engagement group senators Frank Black, Lynn Ruin, Al, uh, Alice Mary Higgins, and Eileen Flynn is comprehensive and calls on the Irish government to, among other things, impose sanctions on Israel and act the Occupied Territories Bill and the Illegal Israeli Settlements Divestment Bill to actively ensure that no U.S. weapons are being sent to Israel through Irish airspace and to push for an international arms embargo on Israel, it can be read in full here. It says the IPSC chairperson, Zoe Lawler, welcomed the motions passing saying, we thank the Senate, in particular the civic engagement group for collectively making such an important demands on the Irish government. Senators clearly understand that the inaction by government cannot continue that unilateral Irish actions are now are needed now. Although this aid has no power to enforce this motion, it will help to increase the pressure on the government to act. It 
says uh, Toy Sitch has stated that Israel is not normal liberal Western democracy. Uh, Simon Coveney has called Israel's behavior monstrous and akin to a rogue state. Polls show that 80% of people in Ireland understand what's happening to in Gaza as a genocide and 70% recognize that Israel is committing a crime of apartheid and that huge majorities are demanding sanctions. This is huge. Ms. Lawler con concluded, we have been calling for the government to listen to the people it's supposed to represent. We are now calling for it to listen to the Senate. The time for reflection, debate, consideration, and hand sitting is over. It is time for action. Good Lord, that is massive. So, if you have, you know, if you have any type of doubt that the world stands for Palestine, here's your sign. Here you have a European country pushing for sanctions against Israel and their illegal occupation. They're essentially committing a genocide against the people of Gaza. Now, why are so many Irish people passionate and vigilant about this? I want to take just a little bit of a walk through history as to why they are so passionate about this. Let's take a look really quick. And this gives a little bit of a backstory. It says, the struggle in Ireland, what British workers should know. I'm going to go down to why has there always been fighting in Ireland? So it says, the long history of violence and fighting in Ireland is the history of Irish resistance to English oppression. From the time of the Normans, the Irish refused to accept rule by England and fought to regain their freedom. As British became more powerful and modern nation, its grip on Ireland grew. After the English re Revolution brought Cromwell and his parliamentary forces to power, he sent armies to crush resistance in Ireland with extreme brutality. In whole areas, Irish populations were exterminated or forced to flee, and Scottish or English Protestant colonies were established. In spite of all the power and ruthless of British rule, the Irish continue to resist. Does this remind you of anybody else? Sounds a lot like Palestine. The only difference is, instead of Catholic, change it to Muslim. And instead of Protestant, change it to Jewish. And then change or Zionist, really, because Zionism and Judaism are not the same thing. And they're illegally occupying Ireland. So it's the same thing. Let's continue. It says, if the Irish have always resisted, why has Britain bothered to maintain its rule? Because the British ruling class at all times has had two reasons for controlling Ireland and oppressing its people. The first is that the British feared the military value of Ireland to any of Britain's enemies. Britain's rulers from feudal times to the present have feared the possibility of an independent and free Ireland allying itself with their enemies in a war. Why does Israel... Why are they afraid of Palestine? Because they're afraid because of the solidarity from Jordan, Lebanon, Yemen, Iraq, Iran. They are afraid of the solidarity that these countries have with Palestine. The same way as they feared, the English feared that Ireland would have solidarity with other countries as well within the region that are enemies of England. So there's a lot of juxtaposition and, and a lot of one-for-one one that you can actually look at. And this is why the Irish 
are very adamant about the the liberation of the Palestinian people. I'll finish this paragraph and then we can move on. It says English landowners who have never been to Ireland or cared about the conditions there took over Irish land and drew rent from the peasants, evicting those who could not pay. This is settlements, settlements, illegal settlements, just like what's going on in occupied Palestine. This is why the Irish are like, nah, we see what's going on. When you've been oppressed, you see, when you see it happening to somebody else, you are able to better recognize it. This is just like when a whole lot of people who have suffered uh, domestic violence, they can tell when somebody else is being abused. Talk to black people. When we see racism, when we can see it, guess what? We'll be like, hey, that, that, that's racist. When you're not used to seeing racism, when you're in a position of somebody who's not in that, in that realm, then you don't see it for what it is because you're not used to seeing it. You're not used to being a victim of it. So therefore, it, it, it goes right over your head. But talk to black people. We'll be like, no, nah, that's racist. That's a microaggression. A lot of times, unfortunately, some white people will be like, I don't see it. And it's like, because you don't have, you have the luxury of not having to been through it. Some people do not have the luxury, not the luxury. They do not, they have the luxury of not having been through the illegal occupation in that way. This is why some countries are just, as soon as they saw this illegal occupation happen, they side with the Palestinians. Some people, they're used to being in a country where they are the victors. And so they don't see it. They just see it as, oh, well, we just took over the land. It was ours. Because manifest destiny. God told us it was ours. This economic exploitation grew as capitalism and modern production grew in Britain. During the Industrial Revolution, attempts to establish industries in Ireland were deliberately crushed by British by the British because they wished Ireland to remain an agricultural and to be a food basket for Britain. Exploitation says during the Great Potato Famine, literally half of the population of Ireland either starved to death or were forced to immigrate. Yet food continued to be exploited to Britain throughout the famine. It is little wonder that the Irish have fought British rule in English landlords. So I'm going to share this in the chat as well. But this gives a backstory as to why the Irish are so adamant about what is going on, uh, you know, when it comes to the Palestinians. This is why they have as much solidarity as they do, because they know what it's like. This is why they want to push sanctions and divestment against Israel. Because they know what it's like to be the victims of an illegal occupation and an apartheid state. So from what we can see is that the Irish are intimately familiar with the occupation and settler colonialism and imperialism. This is why they express zealous solidarity with the Palestinians and many other groups that are enduring the same conditions around the world. In essence, they get it. So I'm hoping that this goes through completely and this slows down Israel in their quest to eliminate the Palestinian people. I hope this gives the people in Gaza some relief. And as I say once and again, free Palestine. Thank you so very much for watching my channel and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further, so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education 
that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. More head kisses. And have a beautiful day.